Boca Raton, Florida, a wealthy community filled with stately homes, luxurious golf courses, and miles of picturesque beaches. It's this good life that attracted Cece and her family to move here from New York 10 years ago. Hi, thank you. Her father, a former pizzeria owner, helped Cece open Anna Vincenzo's in 2001. My father gave me over $300,000 to open up Anna Vincenzo's. My father's been in the restaurant business since before I was born, and I've always been around a kitchen since I was a baby. Okay, pumpkin, bye. I love you. Now Cece is raising her own family, along with her husband, and facing the challenging demands of being owner and head chef of Anna Vincenzo's. Welcome to Anna Vincenzo's. How are you tonight? Two veal piccadas, please. I'm a self-taught cook. Veal marsala, cuatro formaggio. I don't think there's any rules in cooking. My menu, I cook what I like. Chicken marsala, padrino, snapper, Anna. I am passionate about what I do. Can you tell Michael to pick up his fucking calamari wherever they go? After I opened, business was insane. It was fun to come to work. The adrenaline's going, and it's, it's fun. It's great. And you make money. Some more lasagna? Oh, oh no okay. thanks. No? About two years ago, it started to change. Let's see, everything that you could possibly think of went wrong is gone wrong. I don't really know why or what happened. That looks like shit. When it's slow, that I don't even want to come here. I've lost my desire to come. I don't know how to cook snapper. Maybe it's not cooked enough. To be honest, I got to say, CC probably the biggest reason why we're having trouble right now. OK, forget it. Let's go to another fucking table. She never really cares what's going on. Why is this still here? Table 42. She'll serve crap to a table. <laughs> When she gets mad, she's aggressive and angry. Here's your f Tell everybody to fucking go home. I'm shutting the place down. Yeah, Cece has to be hurting now that the business is going bad. There's no customers left. I don't know what happened to them. Where did they go? As of right now, I, I'm in debt about 190000 to my father. I stay up at night just thinking, how am I going to give him his money? It's like nobody fucking coming here. And five tables we have, and everything's fucked up. <laughs> so hard to see my daughter lose money every day because Sissy was so hard. I love you. <laughs> it is very stressful and very difficult for Cece. Now that we have a son, the restaurant has to work for our personal lives just, just to even live. I'm a failure. I'm afraid we're going to lose our house. I always tell Michael, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to feed the baby. Hi. Hey. I have, like, a weight on my shoulders that, you know, weighs a 1,000 pounds. And that kills me. Oh, my God. Chef Ramsay's my last hope. <laughs> Anna Vincenzo. Anna Vincenzo's the restaurant. I'm Cece. You're Cece. Nice yeah. to meet you. Would you like to eat? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good to see you. Thank you. I would say that he should like everything. There's really nothing on there that I make that I don't like. This is your restaurant. Correct. Yeah. You're the owner. And by the look of the state of the apron, the chef as well. Yep. Um, and where did you learn to cook? My father had uh, a restaurant since before I was born. Wow. So I was raised uh, pretty much in a kitchen. There's a line cook over there with white hair that keeps on staring at me. Is he all right? That's my father. He works for you? Yes. And my husband is head server. Oh, your husband's here as well? Yeah. Oh, he wow. helps me out because uh, okay. we need it. Uh, where is you he? You want to meet him? I'd love to meet your all husband. Right, I'll get him. Michael? Yes? Um, Mr. Chef Ramsay wants to meet you. Well. Are you? Michael. I can't believe it. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, looking nice and smart. Would you dress like this normal for work, or...? I always like to look nice uh, so for the guests, so... You look like you're going to do a hit after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I uh, sweat a little extra just to look nice for the customers. I got to get back into the kitchen. Ashton? Ashton, Ashton, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good to see you, too. I guess we'll be talking to each other? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Right, Ashton. I'll take one of everything. One of everything? Yeah. One of everything. Why not? Great way of really getting to see each and every dish, understanding mm -hmm. the flavors, and getting a touch of that authentic Italian cuisine. One of everything on the menu. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The Anna 
Vincenzo menu is ginormous. He must be insane, because we're going to be here all day. He wants one of everything. Whatever. He said he wants one of everything. Just say to him, let me understand. You want one thing on the okay, whole so Cece wants to clarify that you right. do want one of everything. Because right. I hope he hasn't eaten in a week. Oh. This is going to be harder than I thought. Cece says you hope you haven't eaten in a week. It's a big menu. Have you seen it? I haven't seen the menu. Have a quick look? Yes. Oh, what did I get myself into? It's quite large. Yeah, like that's One, just. Two, three. Oh my god. It's that big. How many dishes are on there? A lot. Huh? Then you have the. Look at it. Mm-hmm. Aye, aye. That was a joke, by the way. I hadn't even looked at the menu. I figured that. There must be hundreds of dishes on there. Now, if you haven't eaten for a while, I'll be well, more than happy to prepare Let that. me have a look at the menu and I'll order, yes? I was like, oh, thank God. Okay, so uh, I'm ready to order, thank you. All right. So I'd like to start off with salmon uh, divino, thank you. And then throw in the uh, snapper anna. Snapper anna? Yeah, the favorito del nonna. Yeah? Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Okay, here we go. You got salmon divino ready? Here's your thank salmon you. divino salad. Well, this looks like a fucked up version of a science lab. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Salmon is dry. And overcooked. Fuck to get in that thing. Huh? <laughs> Do they paste that together in the morning and stick it together? Slice it just now. And is the salmon fresh or is that frozen? Um, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Would you ask her? Because it yeah. tastes frozen. Okay, let me go ask. Thank you. He wants to know if your salmon's fresh or frozen. Tell him it's fresh, but it is frozen. She said the salmon comes in fresh and then they freeze it. It's like eating a piece of cardboard there. See, that has to be Florida's worst dish ever. He said the salmon divino. He said what? Tastes like cardboard. He's supposed to be here to help me. He's not supposed to be telling me that nothing's good. Give me the snapper, Anna. If he complains about this, I'm really going to fucking kick his ass. Oh, my God. And there's the snapper, Anna, for you. The snapper, Anna? Mm-hmm. I'm just out of interest. Where is the snapper? We're under all that. Under all that. This one looks like a, uh, a dog's dinner. I don't know how well this is going to work. Oh, my God. That just tasted mush. Is Michael nearby? I'll get them for you. Um, just taste that for me, would you? Please, that's the snapper Anna. It's soggy. Should be baked a little longer. Ah, it's fucking disgusting. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, would you do me a favor? We make sure that CC tastes that, yeah? I think it's really important. All right. Thank you. What do you say? For you to taste. Taste what? He says it's soggy. I'm not he, he touched that. I'm not going to put my mouth on that. The snapper was soft. Well, what the hell do you want it to be? Hard like a rock? I mean, I don't even get that. Tell me, you know what? She doesn't even want to cook you the rest. Now I'm really getting pissed off. I'm not kidding. She's going mad. Does she always shout that's at her? You know what? As a huh? chef, tell him that I said there's starving people in the world, and if I have to keep making food to go in the garbage, I don't want to make any more. Right now or when I bring in the next No, day? right now. Why should I make him anything else? I don't waste enough. Fuck him. CC said that there's starving people in the yeah, world. Yeah, let me just stop you there two okay. seconds. Yeah. She got something to tell me. She should come and tell me herself. Okay. I don't think it's fair that you have to do her okay, dirty work for that. <laughs> so tell Cece when she's finished cooking, she can tell me everything she wants. Until then, I'm here to eat and to taste the food. I'll tell her. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I didn't want to tell Cece the truth at all about anything he said. She's going to probably kill me. She's going to kill the messenger before she even kills Gordon Ramsay. What's that? He's saying this later. You can tell him yourself. But right now, he wants to try and eat everything. So he is a bigger asshole than I thought. Fuck him. What? Fuck him. Fuck him? Chef of Ramsay. I'm surprised that nobody breaks his legs here. Here's your pizza. Thank you, honey. And which one is the, oh? That's the favorite, your Don Nona. Piece of Nona. Lovely. I don't care how many fucking stars he has. He can kiss my stars. Jesus Christ. I'm so pissed off right now. That's just not nice. Soggy in the middle and crispy on the outside. Dreadful. It was shame. It's a bit plain. Boring. Yeah. Bland. Thank you. Can I go over there and scream at him? 
Yeah, sh take your knife uh, with you. I'm not going to even say shit. I'm just going to throw it. I tried to throw it in the garbage before she saw me, because I knew she was going to flip. Oh, fucking, no fucking way. What's wrong with that now? He said it was bland. Oh, my god. He said it needed more flavors to it. I was so mad at him, I wanted to rip his head off. He's British. He doesn't fucking know anything about the pizza. After a terrible lunch, that's dreadful, Michelle. Chef Ramsay is ready to give his input, but this owner doesn't appear ready to listen. Let's start from the top, shall we? Sure, let's start. The salmon? Yeah. Yeah, hideous. The decoration with the cucumber. Everybody loves that salad. Who's everybody? The restaurant's empty. OK, the snapper, bitterly disappointed. It was macerated in crap and mozzarella and didn't even taste of snapper. That's bullshit. Yeah, you didn't taste the snapper with the mozzarella on top? What's wrong with that? I asked Michael to make sure that you tasted it. I'm not going to eat something off your plate. You are a piece of work, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. When people talk bullshit about my food, yeah, Sorry. that pisses me off. Where's Michael? What difference does it make with fucking Michael is? He's got nothing to do he with it. He tasted it. And what did he say? He said it was mush. Are you fucking kidding me? Where is he? I don't like being criticized at all. Maybe he's talking out of his bum, as they say in, in England. You said the fucking fish was mush? No, it was tender the way everybody else enjoyed it. Yeah, it was tender. Michael, are you honestly trying to tell me that you're now saying that it was perfectly cooked? Soggy. Should be baked a little longer. It was a little bit on the softer side. A little bit on the softer right. side. I'm not expecting you to stand there and stick up for me, but trust me, the food was overcooked, and it was bland and mush. But there's nothing wrong with that snapper. I think it was very foolish and very hard-headed that she wouldn't listen. I was like, oh, what are you doing? What's with the defense mechanism? <laughs> oh, my god. Huh? Don't you get defensive if somebody comments about your food like that? I don't cook shit like that. When was the last time a customer complained about the food? Well, last night. Mm -hmm. And what did they say? It was bland. And were they right or were they wrong? No, they were right. But you're off the wall with what you're saying. Here's the difference between you and me. I listen for feedback. You can't handle it. I came here because you asked me to come and help you. And your reaction to me telling you something quite constructive in a very calm manner is a joke. OK, so you want me to be your fucking puppet Why are you because, shouting? Because you're Why? pissing me the fuck off. So shut the fuck up and talk properly. Is this the way you react when I'm not here? Is this a normal procedure when it is, yeah? Oh, you're going to get your fucking ass kicked. Oh, there you go. Madam, you have an attitude problem. I'm not too sure which is worse. The food or the attitude? Oh, can I hit him now? Uh, you know, a lot of people said you were a jerk. I think I believe it. Anything else? Fuck this. No fucking way. What a sad case. Am I supposed to run after him and say, oh, please come and help me? Well, fuck you. He's lucky I didn't hit him with something. I was that close. In spite of his rude welcoming, Gordon decides to give Cece another chance and returns to the restaurant to observe Cece and her staff in action during a dinner service. Right, so, what do you keep in here? Tartufos, our gnocchi. And who makes the gnocchi? Uh, we used to make them ourselves, but we buy them now. They look definitely frozen. And what are these little babies Meatballs. here? Meatballs. They're a little uh, overcooked. Jesus Christ. And whether they're that overcooked, would you serve them? We can't just throw them away. They smell like cat food. Cat food? That smells like an authentic meatball to you. Well, I don't have cats, so I don't know what cat food smells like. Oh are we going to be able to cook, or are you going to keep us in my ball? I swear to God, I'm not here to get cross-examined by you. Let's get that right, yeah? There's only one person who's going to be fucking losing out on this, and it's certainly not me, OK? But don't fuck with me. I really want to prove to that pig-headed British jerk that I can do it. Nice. We're going to go right this way. Oh, we're going to sit right over here, guys. Who wants to go first? You chicken parm. Chicken parm? You want veal piccata. Very good, thank you. You ready? Yes, please. Rigatoni vodka with chicken, a rigatoni angelino, a fettuccine alfredo. Veal piccata, fat veal chop. Table 11. Can somebody pick up this food? Can I get some fucking service back here? 
Cece always seems to point the finger in the other direction. She's been always blaming the server. She never once thought maybe there was something wrong with herself. Get that shit out of the window, please. Cece pushes the first orders out quickly, but her customers... Okay, we have the grilled chicken. ...are unhappy with what they receive. The meal has no flavor at all. I'm sorry about that. And I'll be back to get those plates, okay? okay. Jesus, what happened there? They said uh, there's just, like, one giant chunk yeah. of it there. That's what happens when you use frozen food and dip it in flour that was not even shaken off before it goes in the fire. Do you tell Cece that now, or...? Um, I'm afraid to, because she's so busy. She needs to know. Trust me. Cece. Customers are saying that they're too chunky, like they're just like one giant piece. The calamari was in a big clump. I saw that. You expect people to pay money for that and eat that? Come on. Why don't I just work by myself and fire all these fucking people? You think I can handle it by myself? I'm trying to help when you get so defensive. Continue serving shit then. Okay, Cece. No, no, wait, wait, wait. They just say it's no flavor, but they're willing to let you try to put some flavor in it, like garlic. No, I, I just don't want to put nothing in it. It's like they just spitting in your face saying, oh, what is this shit? This is not good. CC, I need this uh, reduced down a little more and add it. Michael, you know what? I'm ready to tell everybody just to leave. It's coming back for a reason, right? Don't. Huh? Even, I just don't even want to hear it right now. Well, you can't just fight like a precious princess. Yeah, I I look like a fucking princess, right? Sorry, I thought this was your restaurant. I think Princess Diana didn't hang out in the fucking kitchen. Princess She's from Diana. your neck of the woods, isn't she? Wow. Exasperated by the number of returned dishes. I can't keep doing it. An immature Cece is ready to throw in the towel. I'm done. What do you mean you're done? Everything's fucking coming. Keep cooking for nothing. It's a disaster. I've had it. I'm finished. I'm done. Everything's <laughs> fucking coming back. What are you standing here fucking keep cooking for nothing? Just 90 minutes into a disastrous dinner service, Cece is not only frustrated. I'm done. She is embarrassed and has reached her breaking point. <laughs> are you going to be all right or are you going to pinch out? I can't get in my breath. You want oxygen? Or... Huh? I reached the breaking point in the middle of everything. And I just totally wanted to go home. Even though Cece has calmed down and returned to the kitchen. Can you tell the rest of the people when I'm serving him my food? She has no interest in continuing to cook. Shut the restaurant, then. We got to get What's the rest of What's the point of having a fucking chef that doesn't want to cook for them? Shut it down. Well, we got to. I'll get back there. I'll huh? get back there. It's too important. It's too important. As Michael and the line cooks try to push the last orders out, back in the dining room, many customers are fed up and leave without ever receiving any food. I have two minutes with you. Thank you. You all right? <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I can't start to even attempt to help unless you come to terms with the problem, and that is the food. I it's good when I cook. Like come on. This is not a game for me. It's not a fucking game for me. This is my life. <laughs> It's not a joke for me. <laughs> Don't stop saying that. It's not a joke. It's not a joke for me. I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't fucking be here. Don't stop just saying I don't care. Just stop, please. Well, I haven't said that. Yes, you did. What I'm trying to tell you is that you have to come to terms internally that there's a huge problem, and that is with the food. Nobody wants to hear that anything that they do sucks. I don't like to fail. Death would be better than failing. It's certainly not the sign of weakness to admit your failings. I've closed three restaurants, but I also have a number of successful ones. 1,650 members. I know members. who you are. That's... And it's, it's, I... Yeah, a jerk, you told me earlier. Well, you can be a jerk. Stop acting like a pensioner teenager. I'm not going to stand there and be a doormat for you to take the piss out of me. Let's get one thing right. You asked me here, and I'm here to help. So let me in. OK, the food sucks. There, you happy? There's a problem with the way the food is prepared. There's a problem with the way the food is ordered. There's a problem with the way the food's not respected. 
I'm sorry, Cece, but it's just not good enough. <laughs> New day tomorrow, okay? What do you want me to do? I want you to go home and get some rest. Right. We start to rebuild. I'm sorry I called your name. Let's go. Up. Let's get in there. Let them clear down, and I want you out of here, okay? Where am I going? Yes. Home. He says he wants to help me, and I believe him. This place means everything to me. And I don't want to just give up. Chef Ramsay now believes that Cece is finally prepared to listen. So he comes in early the next morning to put the first part of his plan into action. Now, all of you together, no yeah. problem. Cook me the whole menu. That would be like 180. 181. All right, we're gonna give it a try then. The cooks only have three hours to prepare the 181 dishes before Cece and the rest of the staff arrive. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, sir. Today's a new day. Yes. New start, new attitude. I've got a little surprise for you. A small surprise. Let's go. Oh, my God. Like, holy shit. There's food everywhere. One of every dish. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm shocked at all the food over here. Like, I knew the menu was big, but seeing it all in front of me now is amazing. Like, I'm just like, really? The menu's far too big. Yes. Yes. That has a huge impact on a number of things. Slow production coming out of the kitchen, high food cost, and more importantly, inconsistency. The bottom line is, you're producing quantity over quality. So we've seen the menu. Visually, I've got another way of getting this menu across. I want to show you how big your menu really is. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> Debbie, Ashton, I need your help. Yes? Two seconds, come around. I'm going to start off with each and every dish. You're the frozen lady? Yes. Ashton, you are the fresh lady. Let's go. Calamari Britti. Yeah, tender squid, lightly floured and fried. Fresh or frozen? Frozen. Stick it here. On we go. Mongoli, fresh or frozen? Frozen. Can't hear. Frozen! Thank you. Fresh grilled salmon, fresh or frozen? Frozen. 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 Frozen, frozen please. Frozen. Let's go. Frozen. I've been in the freezer. Frozen on there. Frozen. Definitely frozen. Keep up, girls. Trying to keep up? I'm trying. Trying. I didn't even think I was going to even put a fresh sticker on that. I'm going, okay, I'm going to stand here, I guess, the whole day just doing nothing. Caesar salad, fresh or frozen? Fresh. Thank fuck for that. Fresh salmon grilled to perfection on top with a citrus mango salsa. That's fresh. fresh. OK, let's go. It's a rude awakening to see how much stuff on the menu was actually frozen. Just over 80% frozen and 20% fresh. We're going to start off by reducing the menu. Cece, I'm going to be working with you in the kitchen and coming up with a plan for the Anna Vincenzo family-style meal. Soup, salad, pizza, homemade lasagna. I'm going to do that with you personally, OK? Sure. For the next dinner service, Chef Ramsay is determined to introduce a special that is not only fresh and delicious, but positions this restaurant as the ideal place mm. to get oh, value and quality for a family. OK, simple lasagna, the meat lasagna. Fried beef, a little touch of the sauce. OK, it's going to be one third sauce, one third meat. A little touch of our ricotta sauce on top. I personally like this family style idea because this is definitely something that we should do because that's going to help the kitchen. It's going to totally help us get the food out faster. The fanya's in. OK, we've got the soup. Have a little taste. In terms of flavor, it's extraordinary. Yeah? Yesterday, I really hated Chef Ramsay and I wanted to kill him. Today, I really believe he wants to help me. Chef Ramsay believes Cece is now willing to take his advice and move forward. So he and his team work together to pull off a huge surprise for Cece and her staff. Good morning. Morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the new Anna Vincenzo. Take your blindfolds off, please. Welcome to the new Anna Vincenzo. Oh, my so God. Great and beautiful. <laughs> Look at the space created. Gone are those dark, sedated colors. We've got lightness, 
It's contemporary and it's timeless. Doesn't it bring so much light in here with the windows? <laughs> I can't even describe the difference. And I think this change is going to change everything. <laughs> it's classic, contemporary. You can sit on every table and view across the room. Webstrom Store had donated $10,000 worth of plates, knife and forks, <laughs> tableware, <laughs> chairs. God bless you. And, Cece, you, my darling, are going to be the star of your new restaurant. Have a little look at that. Kiss the cook. How cool is that? Make it yours. Yeah? <laughs> the colour? It felt awesome to see Cece that happy. Like, she was blown away. She gave him a hug before she wanted to rip his head off, and she just gave him a hug. It was cool to see. You happy? <laughs> Angela, are you happy? See my daughter happy, so I am happy. Good. And what do you think? Beautiful. Yeah? God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm never going to forget it for the rest of my life. What does Chef Ron do it for my daughter? Oh, God, it's so different. It looks like a different place. I can't get over it. I'm ecstatic. I'm just a little nervous about the new menu. After this, I don't know what else he's got in store. The menu has gone down by half. Why oh, it looks bad. Why? So you can keep the cost down and the freshness up. Yeah? You have to think forward. Your kitchen needs help. I know. Yeah. So I've arranged for a top restaurant consultant, OK, which I'm taking care of for the first month to help you get through this difficult time, OK? <laughs> His name is Daniel Surfer. <laughs> Daniel. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, how are, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Good. Now, here's our owner, Cece. Yes? Nice to meet you. He's been handpicked by myself. Years of experience in some of the best restaurants across Florida. Now, this man's going to be by your side for the next month. Yeah? yeah. Look after him. Listen to him. I won't yell at him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have a phenomenal chance here to turn this around. Today is the start. Ready? Good. I couldn't even believe that he got a chef consultant for us. I feel more hope now. I know that this is going to make a total difference. You like the menu? You like the decor? Yes. Good. What's missing? Customers. Customers. So now we have to use our initiative and spread the word. I started putting together, with my team, the most amazing marketing plan. So today, five Florida radio stations will be outside that front door in your parking lot. Why? We are having the Anna Vincenzo's Pizza Making Contest. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, that's not all. We have three teams competing in this contest. Team one, representatives of the Miami Dolphins. Yes. <laughs> Team two, no representatives way. of the Miami Heat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Team three, representatives of the Florida Panthers. This is crazy. The most important objective of this contest is by tonight, the whole of South Florida, yeah, would have heard of Anna Vincenzo's. Yes? Excited? Good? Oh, no. Why are you unhappy now? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you going to call me a jerk again? No? Because you haven't today so far. It's a jerk-free day? Wow! Oh, well, yeah! It's a special day for us. The whole family at Anna Vincenzo's, not just me. After a drastic makeover, oh, it's so different. And a dramatic menu change, the Anna Vincenzo family meal. Gordon has created a huge marketing event to spread the word, featuring South Florida's top pro sports teams. The Miami Dolphins, the Miami Heat, the Florida Panthers. They will be competing in the first annual Anna Vincenzo's pizza making contest. The turnout today is amazing. There's camera crews, there's news crews, there's radio stations. I'm like, I don't even know where to turn. Each team has the most amazing ingredients in front of you guys to make their own pizza. You have three minutes to make that stunning pizza. Yeah! Take your stations. On your mark, get set, go, let's go.
inspiration behind the thought and the process. We want to make it even. <laughs> we want to make it a success, just like the Panthers. Panther pride. I don't even eat meat, but I put meat on the pizza. <laughs> just because I didn't know what else to do, so. One ingredient on there that you think is going to blow the mind of the judges? Put a lot of love in it. A lot of love? love OK. <laughs> Excellent. Right. They all did a really good job. Even though it looks really easy, it's not that easy to make pizza. We're going to find out who the winner is. The Florida Panthers. Cheesy. Miami Heat. Oh, that one's good. Here we go. This is going to be tough. The Miami Dolphins. Huh? Beautiful. Beautiful. Good. Hey. The winner of the first ever Anna Vincenzo pizza making contest is it going to be Panthers, Heat, or Dolphins? Which one is it? Come on. I'm going to have to say that. The Miami Dolphins. I'm coming that way. Pepperoni pizza. Oh, yeah. Pepperoni pizza. Chef Ramsay's marketing oh, event nice. did definitely get the word out about the new Anna Vincenzo's restaurant opening. The whole Boca knows that we're doing a relaunch. It's like a dream. It's an amazing experience that I would never expect in my life. It's a new beginning. We're going to be awesome! After the extraordinary marketing event, consultant chef Dan Surfa works with CC to prepare the new menu. Put these in the oven. Then Chef Ramsay introduces the dishes to the staff. We cut the menu in half, increase the freshness and the quality. First impressions, how does it look? Smaller. Smaller, <laughs> yes. OK, let's start from the top. Baby fried mozzarella balls with marinara sauce. Shrimp scampi, yes. Calamari frit, not clunked, glued together. The sea mussels, yes, with white wine and tomato sauce. Baked clams, uh, they're not frozen, they're baked. It's That's so beautiful. Dog. Wow. Parmesan breaded pork chop. The pizzas, they're a bit of a hallmark here, so we just tarted them up a little bit. Spaghetti meatballs, fresh. If you're not happy with it, you don't send it. End of story. The line stops with you. Have a taste of the food. Let's dig in. Mm. The eggplant tastes good. Uh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I'm very excited about the menu. The family meals, I could do stuff like we make at home and serve that family style. The Anna Vincenzo family style menu. Push it. OK, let's go. Yeah. Let's get set up in the kitchen. <laughs> Two? You want to do the family special? Yeah. Nice and easy. OK, you're going to love it. Very nervous. Everything's at stake right now. We need to get this relaunch, like, going. Tonight's about standards, yeah? Quality over quantity, yes? Anna Vincenzo's family meal, yeah? Got to work tonight. Let's go. Give it all you got, yeah? Yes. OK? Yes. Please. I feel really, really nervous. Tonight's a really big night. It means so much to us, and I just don't want to mess it up. Let them know the difference between what you're waiting for and what's ordering in. Can you start me two veal piccatas and the single uh, lasagna? But don't, don't like call it again. Okay, good. Right, Cece, these yeah. first three for tables got to go out quickly, yes? Okay. Gordon's overhaul of the menu has been dramatic, with an infusion of quality and freshness. More salad than that, please. His family-style meal and smaller menu have made the load on the kitchen much more manageable. Come on, guys, get it together. Timing. And as a result, Cece pushes the first orders out quickly. Service. OK, very hot plate there. Oh, this is nice. It's amazing to see how much fun everyone's having right now with this family-style meal. The atmosphere in here is magical. All right, that's good. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I need family lasagna, table 10. After that, there's no more. OK. It's only half an hour into service, and we've nearly sold out of the Anna Vincenzo family-style meal. So, as a result, the kitchen's running a lot smoother, but the night is still young. Those lasagnas are a little too cooked, I think, no? Oh, man. Whatever. If something's ready, don't wait. Just send it out. Does that look good to you? It doesn't matter. Get the shit out. That little shop looks burnt from here. Are you fucking shitting me? Is it burnt? Pork chop? Yeah. It's done like that. Just send it out. Just send it out. It looks black from here. Well, we don't have time for mistakes. Service! It's fucked, guys. Is it just plain ignorance or are people thick round here? I'd rather you go to the table and tell them we've been extra 10 minutes because we burnt it than stand there sending them shit. I'm going to flip my lid. And none of you have seen me go fucking crazy yet. You know what? I don't fucking give a shit. Fucking hell. I'd 
rather go to the table and tell them we burnt it than stand there sending them shit. It's relaunch night, and although Cece has come a long way, it appears as though she is slipping back to her old habits. It's fucked, guys. And Gordon is having none of that. I know it's hard. You do not have to send it out. Make another one now. Thank you. Start this table. Eggplant parmesan, veal parmesan, veal marsala, spaghetti bolognese. No more fuck ups. We don't have time. Thank you. That's what I need to hear. We're gonna handle it. Please keep an eye on that pork chop. Don't burn it, please. And I was like, you know what? New place, new rules. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're gonna start following what Gordon said. It's like starting all over again. Come on, guys. Now there's harmony now. Yeah. I need the pork chop before it gets burned again. Awesome! Good work. Good work. Perfect. Okay, pork chop. It was a different CC that I've ever seen working in the kitchen. Now she really cares what's going on. She's not gonna serve crap to a table. She's gonna make sure it's good. That's establishing a, a standard, CC. That's established, not there, but there, yes? Yes, Chef. Look at that. That looks beautiful. It's seasoned right. Yeah, that's the way I like it. CC, they said that pork chop was amazing. On table 30, they loved your flounder. Everything was perfect. Awesome. Cece proved she had accepted Chef Ramsay's plan. She maintained a high standard in the kitchen, and she was rewarded with happy customers. Everything good, guys? Yes. Good. good. You enjoyed Very everything? Good job. Thank you. I was just like, oh my God, this feels so good again. Seeing the restaurant full. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. You know, when you see the place empty, it, it hurts. And when you see it full and everybody's like, wow, Thank this you. is great. It's, uh, it's amazing. I got all my passion back. Good to see you guys. I hope to see you again. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Come back. See us. Okay. What a difference from the first night I was here. This is the restaurant that Boca Raton needs and wants. You did very well tonight. And even when problems started, you didn't start throwing out mediocre food. And that was the telling point. And that pork chop that you didn't send made me happy. Mediocre doesn't sit in this town. You're above that now. Well done. Thank you. If you would have asked me three days ago, I would have said, oh, good riddance. I'm sorry to see him go, actually. He did a lot. Something I'll never forget. You've got the restaurant. You've got the menu. Yeah, you've got the family behind you. You've got everything you need, Cece, here to make this place work. Go for it, <laughs> yeah? Stay with it, because I know you can do it. Thank you. OK? Can I hug you? Of course you can. Come here, you. Well done. Well done. Good job. Really good job. Yes, and good luck. I really mean it, OK? Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. OK? You can do it. Hey, good to see you. Thank Don't you Don't be scared much. to take that jacket off from time to time, <laughs> yeah? Loosen, Loosen up a little up bit. Loosen up a little bit. Thank you. Look after your daughter, I'm yes? Oh, Trust yeah. me, the money's coming back. I can smell the dough. I know, it's over there, lots of dough. And I'm looking after my daughter. That's what's my wish in my life. Thank you so Take much. Care. Look after Thank her, you. yes? Thank you. Excellent. Bye, Chef. God bless. Thank you. Right, thank you. What a week. Florida may be called the Sunshine State, but when I first arrived, it was anything but sunny. CC and the restaurant have come a long way in just a few days. Quite frankly, I'm surprised. I only hope the sun continues to shine down on Anna Vincenzo's. Please. Ah, forecast for tomorrow. 100% chance of tears. See? We made friends. I know. He's not that bad. <laughs> I take it back. He's not a jerk. <laughs> After Chef Ramsay left Anna Vincenzo's, Cece continued to follow his advice. Welcome to Anna Vincenzo's. She kept a smaller menu and buys fresh ingredients. New and fresh and exciting. And for the first time in a long time, Cece is hopeful for the future. Miami, Florida, known for its beautiful people, sandy beaches, and Latin-inspired culture. An ideal place for a Danish restaurant? What is traditional Danish food? 
Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. Andy and his wife, Suzanne, purchased the successful restaurant Fleming, a taste of Denmark, eight years ago. We knew it was a good restaurant. We knew it was very popular. And the whole idea for us was to try and keep it as much the same as possible so there would be little change other than someone else greeting them at the front door. Hi, welcome to Fleming. How are you? We were worried about the fact that it said Fleming, a taste of Denmark. Neither one of us know much about Scandinavian food. It doesn't have celery in it, does it? We struggled to try and find a chef to come in. Very knowledgeable. In Danish cuisine, we finally found something we like. Orlando is a classically trained chef. But it's Danish food today, huh? I'm from Cuba. In the menu right now, it's not 100% my cuisine. Give me flavor on the food, flavor. I prefer something like when you right away you eat your food, you feel it. What is that? Bam! Oh, you're going to have to start learning how to speak Danish. I have this chef who's got lots of ideas. You know, let's change this, let's change that. But I've been very reluctant because I, you know, I don't want to alienate our regular loyal customers. Follow me, ladies. Yes. Our clientele that comes to the restaurant are old people. All the servers they read the obituaries to see if our customers are listed on there. After a while, it's pretty sad when you see them sort of knocking down like dominoes. So I haven't been here for a while because of health situations. Oh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. And that's just sad to know these are the only people that we've served to. Keeps going like it's been going. This is what we got. 15 years ago, you couldn't get in here on a Friday or Saturday night because it was booked. Now we don't even have reservations to fill our Friday and Saturday night. I think we have to change something. We'll talk about it later. Andy has been afraid to make changes, and why, you know, when I tell Andy, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, and he says, that's not going to fly. But you can't worry just about what the old farts think that come into your restaurant. You got to get in the younger people and the middle-aged people that are going to be your clients for the next 10 years. It's a 31 dinner. The huge amount of debt that we're under right now, it, it puts a strain on the restaurant, it puts a strain on the relationship I have with, with employees, it, it puts a strain on my relationship at home with Suzanne. This business sucks. I know. We can't have many more Saturday nights like this, or we're not going to stay in business. Our restaurant and our home mortgage are tied into one loan. I'm concerned about losing our house. This has been one of the most stressful years of my life. We're at a point where we need this restaurant to be successful soon, or, or we're going to be in, in big trouble. People immigrate to America to chase the great American dream. They come from Sicily to open the most amazing Italian restaurants, from Shanghai to open their Chinese restaurants. This is the first time I've ever been to a Danish restaurant. Can't wait to meet the Danish immigrants. Thank goodness I brought my dictionary. See you. Welcome to Fleming. Gordon, please. And your first name is? Suzanne. Suzanne. And? I'm Andy. Andy, good to see you. You're the owners? Yes. yes. OK, great. Vorden er du? I'm sorry. <laughs> no Danish here. <laughs> but it's a Danish restaurant. The Danes have left the building. So the chef's Danish? No. No. He's Cuban. Is Cuban. Cuban. And the name Fleming's, it means... Fleming is, was the original owner of the restaurant. And he's Danish. He is Danish. So, I'm trying to get my head around this. Danish name, what's Danish in the restaurant? There's still some influence oh. in the food. And we kept everything almost identical. Ooh, what's going on with the colour? Somebody colour blind? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, actually, I am. You are? Yeah. Well, you look very well coordinated in terms Thank of dress sense. I get a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, where should I sit? I'll take you in. What are they there? Those are our desserts, and we put them out every day. Why would you put them out before the customer orders them? So they can choose. So you finish your entree, and then you parade up here to the gallery. Uh-huh. <laughs> This is antiquated, this idea. This was the way Fleming did it. It's been kept this way. Seriously? Does that look appetizing? Adjacent to the bathroom door? They all have to walk by it at some point during the evening. Trust me, if I was on my way to the bathroom and I had to bypass that, I'd be discouraged to come back and order dessert. I better sit down. Aye, aye, aye. Dessert museum. Maybe when he tastes them, things will be better. Good evening, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm fine. I'm Julie. I'll be your servant. Excellent. 
This is the crudité we serve with every meal. Well, I'm the crudité since uh, my <laughs> granddad's 80th birthday. So old fashioned. And how long have you been here? I've been here 15 years. So you were with the old owners? Yes, I was. Wow. What's changed here in 15 years? The staff. Wow. My God. <laughs> And did the original restaurant Fleming have pink? Honestly, pink flowers, pink napkins, pink walls. It's pink everywhere. Yeah. Oh, good grief. The pink walls and the little blue plates, to me, it's almost antique. It's like walking into Grandma's house. Or say goodbye to Grandma. <laughs> I think I'm ready, actually. Let's start off with the uh, Gravelax. OK. Got to see that. Frikadella. Certainly. Entree. I'll go for the Grandfather Duck and Danoise. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Diane. I have one grab black, one freak appetizer. You tell me what you know really about the food from Denmark? I don't know too much. For me, it's not very excited. I prefer something like it. When you put your food in your mouth, you have pot in your mouth. Here's your grab blocks. Wow. Take me around the plate. Um, it's just some garnish, and then you have the, uh, grab locks. Thank you, Diane. Wow. That is hideous. It tastes like fly paper. Oh, Jesus. There's a nice fly on the side of my plate as well. What a shame. That taste is very strange. Way overdone. And unfortunately, there's a fly. He's dead now, anyway. OK. Mm. Oh, my God. He absolutely hated this, and there was a bug on there. Garbage. One freak appetizer. And this is our homemade frikadellas. Mm hmm Wow. Thank you. Frikadella. Jesus. It's just the bottom mushy. Does a chef ever seasoned food? Everything's just got this air of blandness. It's just like mush and just sort of disintegrates. That's our customers. <laughs> Unbelievable. That must be a lot easier on the dentures. Yes. <laughs> oh, so far, not so good. My name's Dave. How's everything so far? Dreadful. This is special for you. There's a swan just appeared on that lady's table over there. What is that? Cindy does that. What is that for, Cindy? Oh, uh, she has a tiramisu in it. Can I just have a little look at that? I mean, look. This is from the old day. Oh, my goodness me. That is extraordinary, though. I'm going to order dessert just to get the swan. Huh? How cool is that? Enjoy. <laughs> it's amazing. It reminds me of my sixth birthday party with my family. You must show me how to do that. OK. Oh, yes. I like to make my swans and take them to the people and see their reaction. <laughs> just take a big piece of foil, just fold it over. Uh -huh. enough room to have a nice big tail. We love a big tail. <laughs> More elegant, like you, glamorous. Oh, bless you. Twist it around. I love it. Make him a pretty little head. That's just about it. Wow. Oh, and the kids love it. <laughs> Ta-da! This is special for you, here. Thank you very much. My children will love it. Thank you very much. Same trip. Thank you. Excellent. And you just made that day. If this doesn't work out, I'll certainly go to work for <laughs> Chef Ramsey. And I'll make all the swans. This is the duck. Right. My goodness me. When was that cooked? Just now. Really? It looks like it was roasted a couple of days ago. Thank you. Even moist. <sighs> Jesus, just when you think it couldn't get any worse. I don't think that Grandpoppy wanted duck cooked like that. That's definitely one fuck duck. Right now, I don't even think a swan would cheer me up. Oh, God. Tell the chef I surrender. <laughs> no more, please. <laughs> God bless Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. We're done. 
son of a bitch. What a disaster. Where's the chef? That way. Straight behind the line. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. And you're the head chef here? Yes, sir. Why is everything so bland? That's some of the worst food I've ever eaten. The gravel axe, why is it so tough? I don't have an answer for that. It's like eating a leather belt. Frikadella, mushy. The duck was dry, overcooked. That was shocking. Honestly, the food is so outdated. Why did you let him cook that food? Because we haven't tried to change the menu. We've won, we just haven't tried to change anything. Just been afraid to change. My God. You're nostalgic with something that's not worked for a long time. You are at the end of the line. Fucking <sighs> hell. Good evening. How are you? Good. Word of Chef Ramsay's arrival has filled the restaurant with customers for the first time in five years. And so tonight, the entire Fleming staff Owners, waiters, and cooks will be tested. Follow me, please. I am disappointed at some of the things that happened today. How's everything going out here? Good. I just need to start sitting this room now. OK. But there's nowhere to go but up now. And I trust Andy 100%. And I hope to God I'm right. <laughs> because if I'm not, we're shit out of luck. My name is Julie. I'll be your server this evening. Gentlemen, have you decided? You really don't know. Something Danish, obviously. The grandfather duck. Or I'm going to the wiener system, please. Working in beer for wine. Danny Schicken, I'm wiener. I need Cindy, please. Just 30 minutes into service, and a number of entrees have left the kitchen. Perfection. That's what you got. Dinner's ready. So clearly, speed is not a problem at Fleming. They're pretty awful. However, satisfying customers is. How is everything? This isn't so good. Huh? This isn't so good. I'm not going to eat that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's wrong with that? We understand, so she said it was very bland. Let's put it this way, we won't be coming back. It's dog. Any take. I couldn't even look at that, Nita. It's thick and bland. You bland too? Bland, yeah. It just doesn't taste very good. Okay, I'll let him know. He hated this. Okay, okay. What didn't he like about this? He just said he hated it. He said he can't eat it. Oh, God. I'll bring you the menu, ma'am, so you can choose something else, and I'll get you another Pignoli salmon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Andy. Oh, no, come on. This is mushy. Andy is absolutely afraid of change. He's tried to keep the tradition, and I think it's time to move on. Son of a bitch. Oh, come on. I need some extra salt so the fish is too dry. What a disaster. Come on. No way, no way. Oh, jeez. It's a non-stop parade of food being returned to the kitchen, you know that? Yes. Almost everything coming back was bland, doesn't taste well, doesn't taste good. What's going on with it? It was very bland, no flavor. Three items. Oh, fuck. Those dishes were all Danish style. Items that have been there for 25 years. Can I get you something else to eat? You're just eating bread, that's not gonna help. Chicken was totally bland. I don't see how anything can get worse at this point. While Andy tries to pacify unhappy diners... I can make something like uh, coconut shrimp very quickly, crab cakes. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the kitchen in action. He's heard the complaints about the food and knows that many of the problems are not caused by cooking alone. Holy mackerel. Ay, 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 ay. But by what is lurking in the storage unit. What the fuck? Oh, mashed potatoes, piping hot. Unbelievable. Andy, Suzanne, come in here. Oh, gosh. Orlando, I know you're busy there, big boy. I just need you for 30 seconds, please. Yeah, I'll be quick. Come with me. So this is for raw meats, yes? And here we got some... What the fuck is that? Oh, my God. No, come on. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. There was one duck on a tray with meat that was thawing, and the duck was in the meat juice. Cooked duck and defrosting meat. Look at it there, so who put the ducks there, then? Ah, oh, fuck. We've been selling duck. Stop the kitchen, everybody! I need all the 
the ducks off the table and stop them eating it. They have discontinued the ducks? No, just for this evening, no, no ducks. But table 61 had duck. Is that the duck? I'm so sorry. I'll explain in two seconds. Do excuse me. It was embarrassing to have Chef Ramsay literally take the duck from in front of the gentleman and okay. tell everybody no duck. Okay. Have you served anybody duck? I've served about eight. Stop! We're not serving another fucking duck out there! We just contaminated the whole fucking place! Oh, oh. my God. Oh, my God. Raw meat now and cooked meat. No, come on. A frightening discovery in the storage unit. Stop! We're not serving another fucking duck out there! We just contaminated the whole place! Has clearly shown Chef Ramsay just how far this once legendary restaurant has fallen. Now, I am seriously, seriously worried. Oh, we're fucked. Yeah, you're right, you're fucked. If I was a health inspector now, what would you do? You would take that product and probably throw it out. Throw it out? You would continue serving one more plate of food. What do you think we're going to do? Continue cooking? I don't believe that the food that's out here now is contaminated in any you way. Don't I never have seen that before. If I did, I would have a fit. But I was surprised that Andy wasn't aware of that. I think he's had his head buried in the sand for the last seven years. You took one more thing. I'm fucking out of it. There are blinders at times. When things get tough, I put them on and I just forge ahead and you miss some things and you miss some of those. Chef Ramsay is frustrated by Andy's laid-back attitude, so he decides to try and get some answers from Andy's wife, Suzanne. I don't know where to start. OK. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, all I can say is I'm sorry. Trying to work with an owner that's in denial is 10 times harder. Why is he so blasé? I think he's probably in shock. I don't know. I'm not him, so I don't know what he's doing right now. <laughs> Suzanne, if your husband doesn't start realizing what he's doing wrong in a big way, I can't help him. I agree. I agree. I feel let down by Andy. This is a huge, huge wake-up call. And if this doesn't make Andy change, nothing will. I don't know where to start, Suzanne. What I do know is that right now, I don't feel too good about this one. change in the weather and that's exactly what Fleming's needs a big dramatic change so I'm gonna hit the streets and find out what the locals really want from their Fleming's restaurant hello how are you good to see you guys now ladies have you heard of Fleming's yeah, yeah. Of nobody talks about it anymore nobody says oh I was at Fleming's let's go back and try it out there's a new owner and it went downhill have you heard of Fleming's restaurant actually I have what's the word on the street not so good food my parents used to go there back in the day when it was good, but I didn't even know it was still open. Uh, I haven't heard any good reviews. It's old. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a place my mom and dad would probably love to go. And you're not going to go anywhere near the place again? Not until something's done. It's extraordinary. And this guy's at first have changed, but you got all those customers standing on your doorstep. Unbelievable. So sad. Chef Ramsay's grassroots research clearly points out how damaged this restaurant's reputation really is. Okay. Ironically, many of the people who work at Fleming realize they are in desperate need of change. But there is one person who doesn't agree with that. Unfortunately, it's the owner. Yesterday was a really bad day. I took the morning this morning, walked around the community, done my homework, and really confirmed this Danish restaurant is no longer talk of the town. So what I need from each and every one of you is to be incredibly honest. Let's talk about what's wrong with the restaurants. Orlando, tell Andy what this place needs. Uh, I believe we need to build in new menu, we need to build in new food, something more attractive, something more contemporary, you know? That's my opinion right now. Crystal, tell Andy why the restaurant's not working. You're scared you're gonna fail. So instead of taking the jump and the leap of actually doing what you want to do, you're scared that no one's going to like it, and you're going to 
lose everything. But the truth of the matter is, Andy, either way, you're going to lose it if you don't do something. Suzanne, you and I spent time talking last night. You were pissed off. Tell your husband what he needs to do to get this place back on track. In my opinion, I think a lot of people are afraid of change and they don't change until they're brought down to their knees because they're terrified because it's easier to stay with what they know than to risk change. And I think that has been Andy's fault. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah, I, I, her points are valid. My, How do you respond to it? How? My, my response to it now is I'm just afraid to alienate the people that we had and lose what we have. The only thing right now that's going to save your business is a dramatic change. It, it's a long time coming, and it's it's time to do it. Andy needs to take ownership of the restaurant. And I think Andy will buck up now and take charge. Get ready for a dramatic change. Chef Ramsay knows that the changes to Fleming cannot be subtle. And the most drastic change needs to be the food. So step one of his plan is to take the restrictions off the kitchen and let them cook. I want to spend the next 20 minutes looking at the ingredients, what we've got, and just cooking something. And when you start, forget anything to do with Danish. People don't go out in South Florida to dine Danish. Let's get that right, yeah? Good. Think popular, think trend, and think where we are. OK. Let's do some cooking. Four of us together, yes? I want to see a little bit of flair. Oh, yeah, baby. That's going to be awesome, something different. Yeah! That's like we're looking for. That's like we're ready for that. As soon as beautiful. Is it? Mouth in your mouth. Let's go. Ready? With the shackles taken off, the kitchen have come up with a number of exciting <laughs> non-Danish menu items. That's definitely not our menu. Chef Ramsay has added a sear tuna. Now, to make sure everyone is on the same page, he shares okay. these new dishes with the front of the house staff. Right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Nothing Danish there. Taste the chips. They'll be seasoned with a little bit of cayenne pepper, black Beautiful. beans, mm -hmm. pineapple salsa. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. And I love this. Seeing those dishes and tasting them, it's a better reflection of what Miami is. And I think it'll draw in a big crowd. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Well, I think change is difficult for everybody. What we've been doing for the same 25 years is not working anymore. We're going to get this restaurant on track. With Chef Ramsay's newfound belief in the kitchen staff and Andy, Gordon and his team worked through the night to pull off one of the most ambitious makeovers yet. Good morning. Good morning. Come through, please. All right. Today is about dramatic changes. Andy and Suzanne, are you ready? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Good. Let's go. It's time to enter the new Fleming. And more importantly, time to start a new profitable chapter. Oh, shit. Come in. Oh, Please. my God. <laughs> wow. Oh. oh, my God. Holy cow. Can you believe this? Oh, my God. This is magic. We got rid of that pink that scares and spooks customers away. It was dated and uninviting. Now. It's warm, it's elegant. It brings in a new modern era. I'm so excited for Andy and Suzanne. It's the direction that we've been wanting to go. And now we can take those baby steps to do that because we can't go back to being the old Flemings. This color is gorgeous. Andy, what color is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? OK. <laughs> but it looks great. <laughs> it's a Tudor brown. We've got some new art on the walls. And look at the lights. They make the brown stand out. And have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I, I can't talk. This is no longer Johansson Fleming's restaurant. A wonderful new theme, Birds of Flight, taking off into new chapters, <laughs> a new beginning. I love it. I'm extremely happy. Yes. It's gorgeous. To see Andy and Suzanne crying for happy. It, it, we haven't seen that in a long time. Nothing but grim faces, nothing but despair. And this is not despair. This is awesome. I want to just bust. Amazing. I don't cry very often. Uh, I can't tell you the last time. But this did it. This is uh, everything for us. It gives us new hope. 
You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm crazy. I'm happy for you. Thanks. I'm so happy for you. I'm blue. Just... To see my husband cry with happiness, to me, that was the biggest gift of all. I've never seen him so happy. It's been a huge wake-up call for him. Now we have a restaurant to be proud of to take us right in to the 21st century. Andy, embrace it. Really convict it. Make it yours. It will happen. With the change in decor now complete, Chef Ramsay's next step in turning around the business is to market the restaurant to a younger clientele. So he reaches out to two local designers and puts together a swimsuit fashion show. Oh, wow. The fashion show was fabulous. I was amazed. It was good to see younger faces that we want to attract to the restaurant. People are very excited. Our phones will probably be ringing off the hook. Although the main objective of the fashion show was to spread the word about the new Fleming, Chef Ramsay had a secret mission that he wanted to reveal. Weren't they amazing? Yes, yeah, absolutely. For the grand finale, please welcome our male model. I was in shock because I didn't really quite recognize him. It was more than a breath of fresh air. There's a whole hurricane. Suzanne. Yeah. Ten years younger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You look great, honey. The clothes were amazing. The haircut was amazing. Most importantly, he was smiling. How can you not be motivated? Give it up, buddy. Well done. Yes, you look great. You feel good. I'm ready to go. You got to come see this new restaurant. It is unbelievable. <laughs> It's hours before relaunch, and with the dining room makeover and owner makeover now complete... OK, Ryland, let's go, buddy. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil the new Fleming menu. Gone are the Danish gravel axe, the fricadelle, and the grandfather duck. And in its place, a modern contemporary menu, ideally suited for South Miami. Right, start off with the crab cakes. Yeah, a modern twist, the rock shrimp uh, lettuce cups, pan seared, group of fillets, seasoned with chorizo, so it's a little bit spicy, playing on the Cuban influence because the chef is Cuban, and more importantly, nice contrast, yeah? They look more contemporary, definitely more like a, this century, you know? Before we're not in this century, we go back to the 80s, you know? Look at the portion size. What I want to see tonight, more than anything, is <coughs> empty plates, because when desserts come, we're going to do this. Very, very simple. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. To the table. Now, yes, yes. it looks so inviting. It's modern, contemporary, and it's just an immaculate way of serving a dessert. We don't stand and hold on to nostalgia. We move on. Andy, how does it look? It looks fabulous, Chef. Uh -huh. Now, there's no excuse. Have a little taste. Sure. Yes. We're opening in just under an hour, guys, yeah? Mm. Oh, my God. That is good. Really that is whew, out of this world. The menu is fantastic. The food tasted out great. Everything looks wonderful. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any Danish food anywhere. Fleming has gone through some major changes in the last 72 hours. It appears as though the biggest change may have been the owner, Andy. Okay, 74, 75, 77, 78. No 76, okay? Who has a newfound energy and is operating like the leader he once was. Let's go. We've got to roll. Chef Ramsay definitely put a fire under Andy. You should have everything out there. He was sent down special from heaven. I, I know he is. Tonight, relaunch night. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but stick together. We're not throwing food out. We're caring, seasoning in, and hitting perfection, okay? Yes, sir. Let's go. I'm feeling nervous, excited, tense, everything, everything all at once. Crystal, take one cook from the Miami Heat. Yeah. He's coming for dinner, OK? okay. So you look after him, yeah? Hi, welcome to Fleming's. The fashion show clearly has spread the word about Fleming. This is our new menu. I like the look. It's very clean and it's refreshing. I'm very excited. Enjoy dinner. Thanks. The restaurant is fully booked. My name's Crystal. You're one. Not, I know who you are. Okay, it's nice to meet you. Are you ready to order? Yeah, I'm going to get it like a house salad. Can I try the wood salad? Oh, I'm going to have the pan seared mahi-mahi. Yes, ma'am. The pesto shrimp liquidy, please. I'm going to bring you the sushi salad okay. right now Thank for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. First table, yes? Two small Caesar salads. Snap on it, big boy. As part of the new menu, all of the entrees come with either a house salad, a wedge salad, or a Caesar salad. Fifteen minutes into service, and the salads are leaving the kitchen. Carrots? Right to me. 
Rich, you gotta be quick with those Caesar salads. Is our Caesars coming with croutons or are they coming with vegetables? Vegetables? He's making Caesars with vegetables. He's what? That's what I'm asking. I'm trying to say that's not a Caesar. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Is there carrots in your Caesar salad? I think so. Yeah, uh, would you excuse me? Would you mind if I just get a chance to do them again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm my apologies. Hey, guys. Orlando, just two seconds. You, stop. Just look at me. We're not serving Caesar salad with bits of carrot in there. The Caesar salad hasn't changed. Come on, guys. Radish, Caesar salad. The only thing's missing is the fucking flies. Nerves are high. And there's a lot of confusion back there. A lot of confusion in the salad area today. You have to watch what he's doing. Lucky. He's playing complicated salad. You know complicated? What? My grand could do better. And she's dead. Oh, my God. We can't even get out of the traps properly. The cold food is backing up the kitchen. And this, right now, doesn't look good. Fucking hell. It's 40 minutes into service, and not one proper salad has left the kitchen. Basil, can you help, please, yes? And not surprisingly, customers' patience is wearing thin. There's lettuce and some food time. You just take a bag of rummy. The kitchen is totally backed up. I can't even get a Caesar salad. Caesar salad is the simplest things to do. You just put a little lettuce in, little, you know, it's a like, god. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. I asked for five Caesar salads like half an hour ago. Where the fuck are they? Do I have to make it myself? I make it myself, yeah? Oh, a Caesar fucking salad. We're dying over here, come on. Hallelujah, I got my Caesars. OK, here is the Caesar salad. The kitchen has recovered from the salad dilemma. Beautiful, let's get these going. And an hour into service, entrees are making their way to the dining room. And relaunch looks to be back on track. Oh my God, it's not working. But the old equipment at the restaurant has brought the kitchen to a standstill. Where am I trying to No, 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 try to put it on the pilot. Guys, come on! Unfucking believable If we don't have the right equipment with that kind of business, at the same time, we can't respond. Give, give me to me, give me to me. All right. How can you work with a range that half of it doesn't work? Unbelievable. We can't get a fucking meal out of here. Let's go! Shit. Oh. This relaunch, we have to make it work. We don't have time to, to have another bad night, but we don't have what we need back there to, to really pull this off 100%. While Chef Ramsay goes to the dining room to see how customers right, are doing, right. the chefs continue to tinker with faulty equipment, unaware that they are about to cause a much bigger problem. Something's burning. Papi, I smell something burning. Where, where do you smell that? You smell it? Something is burning. Something is burning over here. What is burning? Bread burning? No, it's more than bread. Something else is burning. Something is burning. I smell something burning. Something is burning. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Clear it away. Clear it away. Let's go. Moving, guys. Move the pan. Move the pan. All right, all right, all right, all right. Andy. Move it, move it, move it. Holy shit. Within minutes of Chef Ramsay leaving the kitchen to check on the dining room. Something is burning over here. A stovetop fire has erupted, putting the relaunch and the restaurant in danger. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. As the smell of smoke enters the dining room. Watch out, please, guys, watch out. Chef Ramsay returns to the kitchen and takes charge. If it hits the pilot lights and backfires, it's going to blow on his legs or blow on his face. Underneath, it's underneath. Watch out, watch out. Get out. Watch out, guys, please. Clear it away, clear it away. I mean, when was the last time that was clean? Right, keep working. Keep working. Chef Ramsey, we've got fire out. Now we're trying to get reorganized and back on track. I need one land, medium rare, one revive, medium rare. Come on, guys. Pull together. Let's go. Despite being down to only six burners in the kitchen. Finally an order out. OK. Andy and Orlando have led a comeback. This is you, veal chop, lamb chop. That's it. And Fleming has rebounded from the fire. Roasted chicken. This is outstanding. It's delicious. I like that. I don't like this one here. People were extremely responsive to the new menu. They loved the items. They were socializing and, and having a good time. It was more noise than I've heard in this restaurant in 15 years. It's just refreshing to see you this way. Are you ready for dessert? The chocolate mousse. We want one of everything. Oh, very good. The dessert trolley was sensational. 
and everyone loved the desserts. There's nothing left behind, nothing to box, no swans. Cheers to you. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers to you. you. Success of your restaurant. Will be the best, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. You know, good night. Okay, uh, guys, come over, please. It was a tough night, it was a successful night, but the oven slowed up service, so it's gonna be very difficult to produce this new menu, or any menu for that matter, with the equipment we have. Yeah, what a night. What a significant difference. Wasn't there a new energy in the dining room tonight? A sort of vibe yeah. of, yeah? People were alive. Yeah, we energized. Any one of you could have thrown in the towel and given up. And you held your own. And I, I, I believed in the passion and the fight and the determination to make this restaurant work. Thank you, sir. That was the good news. But there's a big problem here, yeah? This problem will prevent Fleming's from being a success. I need you to follow me. All of you, please. I was scared and I wanted to get away because I had no idea what was going to happen. Hurry up, please. Come out. Just hurry up. Stand over there, please. Oh, dear. Tonight, I was forced to make an emergency call. And this is the result of that call. There we are. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> A state of the art, brand new, tailor made. Vulcan Kitchen. When that tarp came off, I just felt this whole sense of relief. This was amazing. This was the missing link. Oh, oh my oh, god. What the hell? That's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. That's too much. Wow. That's for us? Come on. We're starting off with a unique six-ring burner, a convection oven. Phenomenal. Followed by a six burner diamond cut char grill. And then finally, the most amazing fryer. I'm very fucking happy. <laughs> it's been installed tonight. Now, you have no excuse. Wow. No excuse. Andy and Suzanne, you have everything you need inside that restaurant now. Little staff, great decor, great chef, great menu, and a new kitchen. Now, take it and run with it. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm just, I can't express myself well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I never in my wildest dreams imagined we would be given so much. Well done, my darling. Thank you very much. You're great. Well done. There's absolutely hope for Flemings. We are going to make Ramsey proud, and we're going to do it for ourselves, too. Well done for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> really well done. Thank you. Yes? Yes, yes. Fresh on tour, because that's what you showed. Thank you. Now do it. I will. Good luck. Thank you. Make it work. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Chef Ramsey did a lot of what was necessary to get this restaurant on track. He really found the right idea and the right design. I, I think it's going to save us. I think it's going to turn us around. Wow. What a week. Out of all the kitchen nightmares I've ever done, this has to be the biggest transformation ever. We completely changed the decor, completely changed the menu. But the biggest change of all was in the owner, Andy. Now, he can make his own history as opposed to buying somebody else's. My goodness. Caesar salad with carrots. Unreal. Group hug, group hug, group hug, group hug. After Chef Ramsay left, Andy and his loyal staff embraced the changes that Gordon put in place. Wow, ready to use. And with a brand new kitchen Woo. and a new lease on life. Oh, yeah, that's the sound like they're looking for. Fleming has once again become the place to eat like it was 20 years ago. I can run a restaurant. I just needed the fire back. Your menu looks beautiful, man. Fleming's is going to be around for at least another 20 years. Hi, welcome to Fleming's. Have a seat. We'll be right there. I think we're going to be on the right track.